Welcome to this short video that introduces Microsoft Project. The goal of this video is to provide you with a basic overview of the user interface for Microsoft Project, how we get data into this particular program, some of the things we might want to keep in mind when working with Microsoft Project, and how we can view and report some of our information back out of Project. This is the first in several videos that will continue to build upon one another. Now when we first start up Microsoft Project, hopefully you see some things that look familiar. We're prompted as to whether we would like to open an existing project, or create a new project as a totally blank project, or from some other source. I'm going to click here on Blank Project. Microsoft Project creates a new file for me and presents me with the main interface for Microsoft Project. Once again, hopefully some things look familiar. You have, for example, you will see this menuing system called the ribbon along the top. In Microsoft Project, the ribbon is grouped into areas based on the various components of our project. So our tasks, our resources, the reports we might generate, the project itself, different views into the project, and different formatting tools we might like to use as we are doing various functions within Microsoft Project. Now if we want to have more space to actually work with the project down here, you can simply double click on any one of these top level uh, items on the menu and it will hide the ribbon. You can still get to all those functions. Uh, if you click on the top level item, it will provide you with a drop down uh, menu here. And if you would like to have the ribbon back, you can simply double click on any one of these top down top level items and you'll get it back. Now below the ribbon here, you'll see the main part of the screen is divided into two regions. We have a table view on the left and a graphical view on the right. In this case, the x-axis is uh, a time scale and the y in the graphical is our uh, various tasks that we're going to be entering here in a bit. Now we can adjust the amount of the screen that is devoted to either side of this by simply moving our mouse over the center vertical bar and we can move it back and forth. So if we need to see more of the table or if we need to see more of the graph, we can adjust it accordingly. We can also adjust the widths of the particular columns that are in our table as well. Now we can also adjust the scale on uh, the graphical part, the scale of what we're seeing here. There are a couple different ways to do this. One is that you can come down here to the lower right and you'll notice the ability to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so we can zoom in and zoom out on our project. That's nice because you can get um, everything that you're wanting to see into the area of the screen. However, sometimes it ends up with some pretty weird time scales. So you might have a time scale where you're looking at every 28th day or something strange like that. It fits on the screen, but it's hard to interpret. So what I tend to like to do is come up here to the View menu. And I come up here, here for example, our time scale is 29 days. So I want to change this just to weeks. Okay, or I want to change it to days. By doing so, I have a more regular time scale. Now, let's go ahead and enter some information into our sheet. But before we do, we need to consider how we want to schedule our task. You'll notice that by default, down here on the bottom, it says that our tasks are manually scheduled, meaning that we're going to have to set the date on which they start. This also constrains our tasks in some ways we may not like. It's better to have our tasks automatically scheduled so that the Microsoft Project can adjust their dates and then manually override Microsoft Project when we need to. Okay, so we can use the selector at the bottom of the screen and we can change it so that all of our new tasks are going to be auto-scheduled. Now we can also change this for all subsequent projects. So I'll show you how to do that here. If I go to File, then to Options, and then come down to the scheduling options, you'll see that, um, oh, about a third 
of the way up from the bottom here, we have this scheduling options for this project. Here we can say that the new tasks are auto scheduled, but what we can also do is say for all new projects, we would like to have all of our tasks be auto scheduled. Now this sometimes won't work if you're on a shared computer where the settings get erased each time it reboots or on a virtualized machine like I'm at, but um, it is nice if you're on your own machine, you can actually set that once and you'll be done with it, or you could set it for at least your entire session. So now we're ready to enter some tasks. So I'm going to do so by uh, placing my cursor in this first task name uh, location. Just entering the task name and pressing enter. Okay. Now you'll notice here that our duration by default is one day question mark. So let's change that so that it's four days. for each one of these. Now I already kind of messed around with my timeline here when I was showing you the zoom function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, come back over here to where I can actually get to today's date. And there are my four tasks. Now you'll notice that my entire project Looks like it's going to get done in four days. That's because all these tasks are being done in parallel. This is sometimes we have tasks that are done in parallel on our projects, certainly, but uh, in this case, let's just assume that uh, that isn't the case. And in fact, each one of these is dependent on the previous tasks. So there's a couple different ways that we can enter these dependencies. The one that I like the best is the one I'll show you here. So we uh, actually expand the table portion uh, of our screen so we can see the predecessor information. The predecessor is the task that has to come before this task before we can start it. So for task B, let's just assume that task A has to get done. Now if I try to enter a name here, it's not going to like it. Okay, uh, I have to actually enter the number that's over here on the far left of that particular task. Okay, so now I've sequenced it so that A happens, once that stops happening, B can start, so forth and so on. And you'll see now that my project takes much longer than four days. You'll also observe a couple other things here that, for example, task B looks like it's taking one, two, three, four, five, six days when we told it Microsoft Project to only allow it to take four days. Well, the reason for this is for some bizarre reason, we're probably one of these companies that hires employees that like to have the weekends off, and Microsoft Project's standard calendar has that built in. We'll be looking at uh, calendars later, <coughs> in another video, but for now, that's the reason why that whenever we pass a Saturday or Sunday, it's going to skip over those days as far as work days. So that's one way that we can enter the predecessor information. I'm going to go ahead and delete that out of here to show you a couple more. One is we can actually uh, click on task uh, B, double click on it. It will bring up the task information dialog box. And from there, you'll see several different tabs. One of those is predecessors. So uh, if you don't like using those numbers and you do want to use the actual names, you can do so here because you can just drag from a uh, regular, rather than drag, you can select from a list of all your tasks that are in your project. So I could do it that way as well. Notice that a task cannot be the predecessor of itself. Okay, so that's one way uh, I can do it that is also fairly accurate. Now I will show you one other way 
and that is that you can come over here and you can click on a task and you can then drag down to the next task. Okay. That also works, but I tend not to do that for a couple of reasons. One is that um, it's pretty easy to click here and actually drag that over. Now what I've done is I've changed um, when my task starts, but notice I've actually, something has changed over here in the indicators. I've actually put a constraint on that task, okay? So um, I don't like to uh, use the drag method because I think that uh, there's a danger that we may, in fact, uh, do something wrong here. Okay, so I'm simply going to undo these, get back to where I was. You can also, if you had something just this simple, you can just simply select all of those. I uh, selected the first row, then I held down the Shift key, and I pressed the uh, row 5 here, or selected row 5. And I can come over here, and I can say I would like to link these together. And it will just do it in the order in which you select these. Okay, so that's another way to do it that uh, is fast, like the uh, dragging, but is probably less problematic we have some data into our project, let's look at some of the different ways that we can view it. If I come over here to the left where it says Gantt chart, I can right click here and I can choose different ways that I can view my project. So I can view it as a network diagram. I can view it as a calendar. It shows various tasks on it. I can view it uh, as a tracking Gantt chart. So this will actually track as we are doing our project what our plan was versus what actually happened. Some other views here that we can get to is to actually look at our resources. We don't have any assigned to it yet, but this will become very important in the subsequent parts of our project. Now, if I don't want to have to um, right-click each time, I can actually uh, select the view bar here. And if I do that, I'll kind of expand this out, and then I can switch between these modes fairly quickly. Okay, I like to have that out, um, and so I can choose the particular sheet that I want to go to. Now, that's great because uh, it changes uh, sometimes both the table view here as well as the graphical view. Um, sometimes it changes the entire screen. Uh, so, for example, when we go down here to things like resource graph, it changes it entirely. Um, we can also change this by going up here to view. And then there is a uh, place here where we can uh, choose different views. So we can, you can see there's actually a fair number of views that aren't even all over here uh, that we can choose from. Okay, so that's, that's another place that we can actually uh, set our views. Um, you can also do it uh, here for different resource uh, views as well. One other thing I want to show you is that um, we can add and remove different columns from um, this particular uh, table part. So if we right click here and say we want to insert a column, you'll see that we have a whole number of different types of um, fields that are predefined as well as ones that we can define that will actually let us um, uh, insert different columns here. Okay, so I can either select from the list or once I have this drop down, I can actually just start typing, for example, cost, and it'll put the costs of my um, various tasks here in the uh, table. Now, there's um, one other thing I want to show you here while we happen to be on it, is if I come over here to uh, Format, you'll notice on the far right I have a couple things that I can do. It says Summary Tasks, whether we're going to display summary tasks or not, but it also has this ability to create one project summary task. Okay, This is a quick and dirty way without um, creating different 
uh, summary tasks to actually get some uh, summary information for our projects. So for example, now you notice that it will put the total values for our projects. So project one is going to take 20 days total. And it shows us exactly uh, where and when that project will begin and when it's going to finish. We can also choose different views here by right-clicking on this little area where the rows and columns intersect. Um, I do not know a good word to describe this little area. I guess we could call it the intersection point or something. But being a Star Trek fan, I always call it the Tribble. So if you right-click on the Tribble, you can actually go to some different predefined tables with different columns. This can be uh, very useful, especially when you start to get into things like earned value analysis later. And we want to see all these columns rather than having to start out with the entry table and then delete and insert various columns as we needed. Okay, So uh, we'll be using that in subsequent lessons as well, where we can right click on this area and we can get to some of these pre-built tables for us. Now, one other thing that I want to show you before we uh, end, and that is how do we set the start date for our project? For example, this is showing me that uh, this particular project is going to start on Monday the 9th, which happens to be uh, when I'm recording uh, this. Uh, but it's unlikely that our project is going to start on the same day that we enter information about it in the Microsoft Project. So we often want to set this far off in advance. Now, one of the things that's problematic for students is they think, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this first task to actually start on a particular day. And that way, the rest of the project will uh, start on that day or will follow from that. You can definitely do that for a very simple project. However, you're probably not going to be working with a project that, that is that simple. Because when you do that, what you're doing is you're really putting a constraint on the entire project. Okay, so you're uh, constraining that particular task to start on that day. Uh, and you're also uh, may have it that as you go through uh, developing your project, you find that there are other tasks that may have to happen before this one, or that there are other tasks that are happening in parallel at the start of our project. So it's actually a very poor way to try and set the start date. So what I'm going to show you is the way that we're going to want to make sure that we do that. And we come over here to the project um, uh, ribbon or series of menu items, and we go to project information. And here's where we set the start date. So we can set that start date far out in the future, or we can set it somewhere in the past. So I'm going to set it here for October 11th. Okay, and we will see that um, this project is not going to start on the 12th. Well, the Microsoft Project did not understand me. No, it understood me just fine. It knows I want to start this on the 11th, but it also knows that the 11th happens to be a Sunday and that our standard calendar does not allow us to work on Sundays. So it moved the project to actually starting then on the 12th. Okay, so that's where we actually are going to set the project start date, and that is going to be under the project information dialog in the project menu. So that's a very important point um, and can really um, get you into trouble if you don't know that. So make sure you know that. That's the conclusion of this video, and hopefully you have come away with a good overview of how to get into Microsoft Project and at least do some basic tasks.